Each morning since my journey, as I ready myself for a new day, I look in the mirror and I know it is me looking back, yet somehow I know it is not. How can I put into words the depth of an experience that resonates to the core of my body? Can others recognize the changes that have taken place? The very essence of my being must have been altered. Nothing else can explain the differences I have felt since my journey through Cambodia. As a student, I was brought together with strangers through a shared interest in education. I had a desire and a need to give of myself, believing that somehow my participation in service learning, my actions, could have an impact on the lives of the people I was going to serve. How could I know that the life most affected would be my own? I knew from my first visit to the Buddhist temple in Rochester, this learning experience would be like no other. The wealth of required reading and research could not prepare me for the personal testimony shared by the survivors. Their stories brought the history of Cambodia to life. Texts could not depict the terror they experienced, revealed in the shaking of their voices, nor could it portray their desire for survival and a better life, as seen through their eyes and the emotions displayed on their faces. Although I realize that I will never know the true suffering they endured, the sharing of their testimony allowed me to empathize with their struggles and have a better understanding of their culture and the needs of the people from their country. Each day of our trip was a learning experience. We were fortunate to work in partnership with students from the Royal University of Phnom Penh. I was awestruck by their kindness and their giving spirit. As I walked, talked, and worked amongst these wonderful students, I witnessed truly compassionate souls. They took time from their holiday to not only make a difference in their country, but also to welcome us, sharing their history, culture, faith, and philosophical beliefs. As we traveled the countryside, the vast sea of poverty was apparent. My heartstrings were stretched to the point of breaking as I looked into the eyes of the children living in the city dump. As we offered them a day's meal, I wondered who will care for them tomorrow. In our many excursions to rural schools and orphanages, we were welcomed with open arms. We watched as young children carved magnificent pieces of art or performed traditional dance and sang of the importance of a saved heritage. At many times we communicated through drawings, dancing and games. Trans-global communication such as this needs no translation. As I look back on this trip and the memories I have, I do not think of what could have been. Rather, I think of what will be the next time I am able to go.